Well, folks, it's uh, it's been a minute. <laughs> it's uh, it's the end of the day, day one, and um, just got washed up, had a little break. It's uh, this is one of my favorite times of the the day, the evening now. Uh, so quiet, sun's down, and uh, the heat is gone. Any black flies that were buzzing around, they're gone. And it's just, uh, I can hear some sandhill cranes in the background. And every once in a while, I'll hear a woodpecker working away. Some other birds that I can't identify. But, um, yeah, just a really nice, nice, quiet time to do some, do a little walking. And uh, kind of reflect on how we did today. So I think the tree work is done. Other than uh, Kevin is bringing up his pole pruner. And we're going to trim back some of those cedar branches. And just see whether after that's done, uh, we're open enough. I think I think we will be. Everything's been pushed back from the existing gravel, like two to three feet all the way down. So once they stretch that gravel out uh, to the to those orange marks that are along the sides and I'm gonna have 20 feet of gravel in here you know except for the odd cedar tree that's in the way but they'll just go around that um, let me show you something here <laughs> that's a hole it's a hole where a post is gonna go and believe it or not um, I'm at 43 inches already and I figure I'm getting about a foot an hour with my uh, my various tools here and uh, those are some of the rocks that are coming out um, really light colored limestone almost it's it's soft luckily it's soft and I can break it up and then uh, when I got down to about around two feet or so um, it started to get sandy and I don't know enough about the soil or what's under the the surface up here but I don't know if that's typical or not but it looks like a mixture of like sand and limestone there's another pile over here that I extracted and that looks let's see that was even a little deeper down and that that looks even sandier so I don't know if this is common up here or uh, I've, I've, I don't know, hit upon something that's unusual, but in a good way. So, yeah, we're, we're down there a ways. I'm getting close, you know, I am close. Let me show you a few things. If you don't know how this gets done without the aid of power tools. So that's what we call the rock bar. And, uh... That's like five feet long, used for breaking up rocks in the hole. I use that a lot when I'm cutting logs on the log pile too for moving logs around. Just a terrific tool. Bought that off a neighbor when he was moving for like five bucks. <laughs> and it's it's hardened steel. It's just the right length and fits in your hand. Oh, so nice. Uh, and not overly heavy. I mean, you know, there's some weight there, but it's not... You know, you can work on that for, for many hours and not feel too, too bad. Here's a good one. So, my friend Martin loaned me this, and I've used it many times. So this is a... I call it the clamshell digger, but it's not really a clamshell digger. For sure this is antique. What this allows you to do is, when you put this down in the hole, you can you can work this handle. So it goes down in the hole, and it kind of looks like a spade. And then you pull this handle back. Pull this handle back, and then it closes, 90 degrees, closes that. So that allows you to, to pick up whatever's in the bottom of the hole and pull it out so just look at this it's all cast 
you know, these pieces. I don't know how old this is, but it's uh, it's been used and abused to make many, many holes over the years. This might be some of its toughest work in these rock conditions, but it's uh, it's amazing how efficient that is for cleaning out the hole. And I know they make newer versions of them. I've used them. This is still the best. This is still the best one going. They should remake them in this style. You know, they, the ones they have now kind of like the, the handles kind of close like a scissor action. You can, you've only got a few inches there to close it, to scoop it. This is so much better when you, when you close that. And that makes a full 90 degree bend. You get a, you get a shovel full out of that hole. So just amazing. And that's just your standard spade for digging. Nothing too remarkable there. Let me show you something down here though. So last year, there's a fellow who sells antiques out of a barn up here and I've bought a couple things off him. And he always knows the history of the tools. And I bought a, like a model airplane off him out of, made out of all, it was all wood, very old. And the wings are actually made out of a, the side of a, a building, like a lap, lap siding, ship siding, or ship lap siding. Um, I'll show you that sometime. So he had this here last year, and I saw this, and at first it made me pause because I thought, is this what I think it is? <laughs> and sure enough, so, so that is a hardened steel point, and that upper frame slides up and then comes down and drives that point down into the rock and you can break away a pretty pretty good size rock you know chip away at corners break something in half and when you're down in the hole when this is down in the hole um, you know when you're extending it it's it's you know about knee height and then you drop it onto that rod and i tell you most of those rocks over at that hole i broke up with this it's it's so nice to be able to put the point on on like a sharp corner of the rock and then just just drive that down and sure enough it it breaks it almost every time so it's like a t-bar pounder you know in a way that the handles are but I think you could also, you know, pound on the top of it with a sledgehammer. This looks all pretty beaten down up here. But I can't, I tried to clean up the tag on it. I haven't been able to clean it up completely enough to read it. But it says that it's made in England, this tool. I don't know how old it is. But I can tell you it's heavy. It's got to be 50 or 60 pounds, that whole tool. So it's not like the rock bar where you can just work and work and work. Like, you know, six, eight hits with this and... And I, anyway, have to take a break. Um, but it's, uh, <laughs> so far I haven't had to use the roto hammer. Everything has been done um, with with hand tools. So I got a couple more over here. Let me show you what else I got. Okay, not not a hand tool. But this is the final pile of brush I got. All, all everything was done today with the electric, the husk, husky uh, battery saw. So, chipper, chipper food next. Yeah, let me, let me show you. Boy, I get excited when you see progress. Okay, so, so this is a, like an augering tool as well uh, that you just, that you just turn by hand and it'll carve its way down in there. And then I've got... I've got this one here, which is also like another ring aug augering tool, which will just lift a little bit of soil at a time and lift it up and loosen it. And uh, again, like <laughs> the handle on this, you know, it's it's good apparently to have that handle because you can work into into tighter spots with it when it's loose like that. You can slide it over to one side or another if you're up against a building or. You know, the thing about Martin is like he's lived up or lived down home for so long and that's very rocky conditions as well. So 
you know he's got the tools he knows how to how to do those things and uh and he just he just you know whatever you need take it you know gave me a bunch of wire that i'm going to use to hold the the post back um you know what, whatever it is just uh yeah so uh, so accommodating <laughs> And then I actually, um, I used a shop vac to help clean out some of that sanding material at the bottom of the hole. So uh, Kevin, Kevin actually, that was his advice because he did that and uh, he's, he's used that before. And even if you're just picking away, you know, a couple inches at a time, everyone wants to get down to the four foot mark, you know, when you're putting a post in and going to cement that in place. Um, so, you know, you pick away a couple inches at a time, a couple inches at a time and you know, you make progress. Like I said, it was about a foot an hour today with that. So, yeah, pretty happy though, really. I didn't think I'd get this far today. I thought it was going to be tree work only. But um, that was great. Neighbor stopped by. She saw me up here and uh, stopped by. So we had a little chit-chat for a few minutes. And uh, it's always nice to see people that you know. And everyone's so pleasant up here and friendly. Kind of, uh, kind of different from being down home, you know, laid back. People just have time to talk, you know, and want to, you know, just see what's going on, what stages that you're at, you know, with your building, how your winter's been, you know, what you've been up to, uh, those type of things. So, so nice, you know. So what a day. Yeah, so those are the rocks that came out of that, that I was easy, you know, able to break up with that like manual kind of power hammer or jackhammer for sure this isn't granite this isn't canadian shield it's dola stone so it's dolomite and limestone so there's definitely you know i would say a higher content of limestone in this um the other thing i've been told is that uh when when this gets exposed to sunlight over a long period of time then it gets much harder and it turns black you know, kind of like this stuff up here. Same stone. Um, just, you know, this has been on the surface for a long time. But much different than, say, uh, this one back here, which is, you know, probably granite. So if you hit granite, it's game over. That's like Canadian Shield stuff. That's been brought, actually, it's been brought from uh, from the East Coast. They say the glaciers brought it all in. Um, it's, so it's not native to this, this area. So... Anyhow, there's there's going to be the location of one post, and directly across in this area is going to be the other post. And I was rooting around with the rock bar, and right in the center of that X, I was able to drop that rock rock bar down like probably 16 inches anyway. So that's a good start. So if it, I'm hoping it's going to end up in that area. I won't I won't be able to do any final measuring until I got the other post in or the other you know location for the post. I know I need 20, 20 plus feet. So the center of that X is 20 feet. So it shouldn't be too far off. But um yeah, what a day. What a day. I'll be back later. Probably go for a little walk down the road. I always like walking the road. We've got fifteen hundred feet of road frontage. And you can really kind of look in and, and see the bush when you're walking along. This time of year, leaves aren't on yet. There's like a kind of like a cliff, look, you know, formation down towards the north end of the property. Uh, you know, part of the Niagara Escarpment. Really interesting area that um, we like to explore in there. So. I don't know if there's going to be time this trip, but it would be good when the leaves are off to have a better look in there. But, um, yeah, good day today. Kevin's coming up tomorrow, so don't know if I'm going to be able to deliver any wood to uh, Mountain Trout Camp over there. We'll have to see. But uh, I need to get rid of it, that's for sure. I need the space. Anyhow, that's about it for today. It's been a good day. And hopefully tomorrow goes just as well. Anyhow, I will 
See you then. Take care. Have a good night.